Okay, you guys, it is 6.03. Welcome to everybody. I'm so excited that you're here. I'm excited about this program. Thank you so much. My name is Dr. Lola Denise Jefferson, and I am the Ad Hoc Committee on Obesity Chair. I also have my co-chair here today, Helen Horton. Say hi, Miss Helen Horton. Hello, everybody, and welcome. <laughs> okay, so welcome, as she said, to everyone. I'd like to introduce our speaker. He is an award-winning field director. He founded the Football Network. He's a graduate of University of Virginia. He has 100,000 views on his YouTube channel, Instagram, and Facebook followers. After turning 50, he started to notice that his peers were dying more and more. Mr. Turner researched and began intermittent fasting as a way to create his own longevity. In the process, he lost 50 pounds. And he was encouraged to share his story in a book. And the name of the book is The Real Truth. Eat, sleep, breathe, wait, and lose weight. This easy to understand reference book is for all who have failed using diet and exercise to lose weight because they are actually not required for significant weight loss and maintenance of weight control. So today he will lecture for us. And then if you have any questions, put them in the chat after he lectured, we'll take some questions and then we will enjoy the rest of our evening. So I'm going to turn it over. I introduce to you, Jantonio Turner. Thank you very much for having me. I'm very happy to be here. Uh, like I always like to say, you know, I started this journey on myself and then I shared it with one person, my God brother, because of his wife. And you'll hear more about that in my presentation. And I am always honored to just be able to share this truth that I have discovered with even one person. So where there's more, I am just that much happier but I really do have a message that I want you to follow me on. And I think we all will be happier and healthier as a result of it. So I'm now gonna start sharing my screen so I can get into my presentation. Okay, so the first thing you see is a fasting timer. I'm gonna explain about this a little bit later, but I just wanted you to all notice that you see the elapsed time right in the center is 26 hours and two minutes and 20 seconds. That was the last time I put food into my mouth and I am still here alive, functioning, alert, well, energetic, and ready to go. You know, a lot of this journey has been very interesting for me because, you know, it changes so much of what we, what we, what we used to believe to be true. And what you see on your, on your screen right now is my before and after. And before this journey, I was unhealthy. I was unhappy. I was... Uh, overweight, even though I never really noticed it. And once I went on this journey, I actually found weight loss to be accidental because I started my fasting for the longevity benefits, which I'll go into. And in a couple of months, I walked past the mirror and I looked like this. <laughs> and I was so happy that my Buddha belly had gone. And so I checked my body mass index and found out that even with 20 pounds off, I was still overweight. And so I knew, like Dr. Jason Fung says, the problem with American nutrition is that we don't use logic. And so I knew using logic that what had helped me lose 20 pounds would help me lose more if I kept on doing it. So I kept on doing it. And then I eventually shared my truth with my God brother because he had a wife that was 47 years old when she had her first stroke, but she couldn't walk from me to the wall behind me without being completely out of breath. And as a result of that, she had a stroke. Uh, I talked to him because I wanted him to lose weight because I knew that he could share it with her and help her lose weight. And in that process, he did it for a couple of weeks and he lost 10 pounds. And he said, Jantonio, you have got to share this with the world. And so I kind of don't do anything small. Like, like she said, I did found the football network, which was the predecessor to the NFL network. So when I do something, I like to do it really big. And here's another really big opportunity that I'm very pleased to help push the ball in the right direction so that more and more of us can be healthier and healthier as we go through life. 
But one of the biggest things we have to realize from the offset, though, is that this is unfortunately true. It is easier to fool people than it is to convince them that they have been fooled. So, so much of what we have done when it comes to weight loss, when it comes to weight control, has just been based off of promotion, has been based off of food companies, soda companies, everybody trying to make a dollar off of us. And as a result, the things that we thought were true have not worked. But usually what we do is think, oh, okay, that means I got to go to the gym more. There's something wrong with me. You know, I'm not doing this right. I I've got to do this. I've got to do that. And we internalize it as opposed to recognizing that maybe we just got given false data. So let me give you an example of some of this false data that I'm talking about. This was after 1977 when the dietary uh, um, uh, recommendations, the daily dietary recommendations got changed to highlight carbohydrates. Carbohydrates are cheap and the food companies successfully lobby to get carbohydrates put on the top of the food chain uh, as a basic source of energy when in fact they are a big trap. And we're gonna go into that a little, little bit more but this is an actual ad where here it was sugar keeps your energy up and your appetite down, <laughs> which is absolutely not true. Sugar gives you a bump but then there's a crash from your insulin that we'll talk about as well. And it actually makes you want more. And so this is the type of uh, propaganda that led America down the wrong path. And we're gonna see the damage of that. This, everyone knows this, the saying, breakfast is the most important meal of the day. Well, what people don't know is that that did not come from a doctor. That did not come from a healthcare professional. That came from a cereal company. It came from the Great Nuts Cereal Company where they started it with eat a good breakfast, do a better job. And over time that morphed and evolved into breakfast is the most important meal of the day. And they did that to increase their sales because up until that point, people were too busy getting up, getting out to work, to go make their money than to be thinking about they needed to make sure they ate before they even went out. And that led us down to a big problem as well which this chart right here shows in 1990, there were six states that didn't even have obesity as a measure. I mean, that's how little obesity there was in the country. But let's come forward to the day and we see every state has at least 20% obesity rates. The country now has a 60% overweight and obesity rate. And this is because of what we have done. If this happens in 30 years, and then yet bodies have been here for however long before that, we've got to look at what changed and what led to things being not as good. And so we can clearly see that the number one recommendation usually is, oh, don't worry, you're a little overweight. Just, just start exercising. You just got to go to the gym. You just got to burn off those calories. Okay, well, let's take a closer look at that. So if we look at the calories we burn with exercise, it can be kind of impressive. You know, you see here, hiking is 400, jumping jacks is 546 calories, stationary bike, 464 calories, but that's in an hour. And while that's like, wow, 400, 500 calories in an hour, that's kind of impressive. Once you then look at the truth that one pound of fat equals 3,500 calories, then it's not so impressive. Okay, because the truth of the matter is we're not going to go and kill ourselves on a stationary bike for seven hours to burn off 3,500 calories to lose one pound. So people will often say, well, but exercise is important. Exercise is good. Yes, it is. But exercise is for building muscle. Exercise is for an active body. It, we need to move these things that we have and operate here. But exercise has been falsely claimed to be the main way for you to lose weight. Often when I'm out here in Los Angeles, even I see you know, overweight or obese people out and they're trying to run and they're dying trying to run and I know it's because they've heard somewhere that you're overweight, you need to exercise, so they're doing their very best. But they've set themselves up for failure, which is surprise, surprise, what people do over and over and over again in weight control that then leads to them being able, unable to be able to get their goal and to lose the weight and keep it off. The other problem that we can add to that, I'll wait till my screen catches up, there it is. 
Uh, the other problem we can answer is once you do spend 500 calories, burn 500 calories doing that stationary bike for an hour, what happens? You're going to be hungry. And so I know my main go-to was McDonald's. It was fast food. I ate you know, horribly when I was 200 plus pounds. But look at the problem there. So we just killed ourselves to burn off 500 calories. And yet when we go to eat, it's 1,300, 2,000, 1,500 calories that we're putting in our body. And even on the right side here, where they show, oh, these are the lower calorie val variations, you still see 845, 1,300, 570. So we're trying to, to exercise to lose weight. We're killing ourselves for an hour. We're being very hungry and going and eating something. And then we put the calories right back on that we just burned off. That's not the way to do it. But you could say, ah, oh, but you know, Antonio, we should do salads and things that sort. Well, when you look at salads, salads are still 300, 400, 300, 400, 700, 300 there. Salads themselves still have a, hundreds of calories. So the point here, again, reiterates that exercise is just not the way to do it. Exercise is great. We all need to be active and we all can do exercise. But I lost all of my weight without going to the gym. It was not about me doing that. And the same thing holds for, you know, if you think not burgers, let's go sandwiches. I used to love Subway, uh, but now I actually don't even have a taste for it, which is very interesting. I'm going to get into my story in a little bit here. But even if you're looking at, you know, going to Subway, 700, 800, 400 calories. So again, you just killed yourself and then you went and put the calories right back on. Uh, similarly, with Coca-Cola milk, tea, orange juice, and even, you know, the food companies, the drink companies are very funny with their serving size. You know, I looked at Oreos and a serving of Oreos is three cookies. Now, who is going to eat three cookies of Oreos and stop? Not me, okay? Uh, so we have here 100% orange juice at 6.8 ounces for 80 calories. I know that when I was drinking orange juice back in the day, uh, oh my goodness, I was drinking 16 ounces, I was drinking 20 ounces, I could put down a whole lot of orange juice, but again, I was putting a whole lot of calories right back in my body on a constant, on a constant basis. Now, at the bottom of this list, though, actually, look, there is something good, unsweet black tea and green tea down there with zero calories. That is awesome, but how many times do we go somewhere and get tea? I know I never used to, but now I actually do. And so it is amazing that there are choices and things that we can do and that we can learn appreciation for on this journey when we get just some, a few basics all together that we can use that I'm about to be sharing with you today. And then we got to talk about your drink. So, you know, we all talk about alcohol and I'm not here one way or another on alcohol. I'm only bringing up alcohol because it relates to uh, weight control. And that is that because alcohol is alcohol, uh, the liver is going to prioritize that over your fat burning, over doing everything else in your body. So whenever you put alcohol in your body, your, your liver has to process that first before it can then even get to doing the other things it needs to do. And then alcohol also comes with calories as well. So it's like a double whammy, but the truth of the matter is it is part of what's contributing to what the difficulty is that we have when we try to gain weight control. So what does it break down to? It really breaks down to fat. Now, what people will be surprised to hear me say is that fat is actually awesome. Fat is very, very good, very, very needed for bodies, okay? In fact, it is the perfect, because our bodies are awesome, but our bodies can be very, very smart, and then they can be not so smart. So we, as the being, have to operate our bodies correctly. Um, and I'm here to share some of that information because fat actually is a great store of energy. You know, the purpose of fat is for when there is no food. Okay, you know, there was a time that food wasn't guaranteed. There was a time that McDonald's wasn't on every corner. My ex-girlfriend is Russian and her dad was in World War II and mother. And they had no food for days and weeks at a time for real. I mean, in fact, they will eat spoiled food today because they actually went through real hunger. 
And so the, the truth is that fat has a value for when there is no food. In fact, fat is actually a very good source of energy as fat has nine calories per gram versus sugar and carbohydrates has four calories per gram. So it's even a more efficient source of energy. The problem though, is just like anything else about bodies. Bodies like ranges and ranges are what's important. And so when you can have too much of something, you can have too little of something. And that is where the problem comes with fat that it can become excessive. And when it becomes excessive, then that's where the problem comes. For example, this here is our two ladies, the exact same age, but the difference is the amount of fat storage that the one on the left has relative to the one on the right. And the one on the left is going to be thereafter dealing with all sorts of trouble, such as you know liver disease, fat gets to just clog in our bodies, it gets to, to accumulating, it gets to being in the way of things. And then there's you know cancer, the, the colon cancer, you know, now it is known that the two biggest contributors to cancer in America are obesity and tobacco. You know, we used to think it was radiation and it was this and it was that, and it was this and it was that. No, it is obesity and it is tobacco. And those two are like first and second and third is like way down the list. So we have an opportunity to, to really seize upon this, to get rid of that excess fat that will make our body able to be much healthier. In fact, that's the reason why I went on this journey because I was afraid of prostate cancer. And I'll tell you a little bit more about that later. And then below left, we have osteoarthritis. You know, that excess weight is a lot of stress and strain. I have a friend from high school who's now a bishop and you know how we feed our reverend. So he was 300 pounds plus and I kept on reaching out to him and he eventually joined the journey and after two weeks, he called me up and he said, Gentonio, my knees feel so much better. Yeah. Yeah. And every day he used to have pain in his knees when he got out of bed. Well, because he had too much obesity, he had too much fat storage, causing inflammation, had too much weight, too much pressure. It, it's a lose, lose, lose. But before now, we never knew what it was based on and where we're coming from. The stroke here is, again, what I told you, I would not be sitting here in front of you if my god brother's wife had not had that first stroke. And it was because of that that I reached out to her. And we can severely limit our stress and our potential for doing things like that if we will get healthy and do the thing we need to do in getting rid of that excess fat storage. Type 2 diabetes as well. You know, the body, when it becomes uh, obese, it, it really just, the cells get clogged. And so the intracellular uh, reactions that need to take place once the uh, insulin gets on the insulin receptor of the cell blocks the glucose channel that needs to open up to suck the glucose out of the bloodstream. And that's why your blood sugar stays elevated. So that can be remedied. And now it's known that diabetes type two, that is diabetes type two is completely reversible, but you gotta get your sugars down low. You know, I have a client who started with me and her mission wasn't even to lose weight as much as it was to beat diabetes. And when I first started coaching her, her blood sugar was, you know, 168 at the low. And now her blood sugar is at 70, 80 at the low. And she's so much happier and she's off all medications and she's able to see a future without complications from diabetes getting in the way of her life. And, you know, oftentimes now I say to people who say, me, yeah, but, you know, fasting and things that sort of so hard dealing with illness is hard. And, and we've got to start recognizing that we can affect a lot of the things about our health through controlling our weight. And I never knew or even intended any of this pathway, but I found that as I got healthier, so many things happened better for my body. So many things were, 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 were more able to be done. And I'm so happy when I share it to others and they do it and they have the same benefits that I've had. It is a very happy time. And heart disease as well. You know, here I wanna make a great point. Let's look, let's look at these two bodies. Now, if you will notice, even these two bodies, you can see the heart on the left is enlarged relative to the heart on the right. The heart on the left has to pump through that entire mass 
all the blood and all the circulatory issues, whereas the, the, the body on the right doesn't have to. When I was 200 plus pounds, my blood pressure was 120 over 90. And that was just clockwork. I thought that was normal, you know, which of course by the charts, it says it's, it's totally fine. But now that I am down, I now find that my blood pressure is 100 over 65. Now think about that for a second. From my heart pushing 120 pounds of pressure out, and now it's pushing 100 pounds of pressure out. And think about that's every single beat. You know, when I got my first boat, my boat mechanic said, look, you turn, if you will drive this boat at 2,000 RPMs, this boat motor will last forever. But if you rev this boat up and you drive it at 5,000, 6,000 RPMs, you're going to tear the boat to pieces. Well, isn't a boat engine just like a, a body heart, you, you know? And so when we can get our blood pressure down, when we can get our body weight, our body weight, our body mass down, so the heart has to push through less, look at how you can understand from that, that we just made our longevity go longer. You know, since I've joined this journey, there's a longevity website and, and they have a longevity quiz and you can, you know, put in your, what, how you live your life. And when I started this, my longevity was at uh, 84 years old. And now the way I live my life now, it's at 104 years old. And so there are appreciable differences to the way we do our lifestyle. And it just becomes us becoming aware of it and able to move on and understand what we're actually going through. Because the problem is, this is a trap. The, the heavy body is a trap because we would eat food, which then rises, raises our blood sugar, which then makes us have more, more insulin created, which then the cells get clogged from the excess fat storage and they're unable to process the sugar. So the sugar stays high, then it is converted as fat uh, in, for, for when there is no food, mind you. And then we're gonna feel tired and hungry and then we're gonna go eat more food. So it is a ruthless cycle that we have got to break but the good news is that we absolutely can break it once we get made aware of what the, what the story actually is. And it breaks down the very, very simply, the fed state versus the fasted state. You know, I heard just recently, very interesting. You can kill an alligator with your bare hands, which makes no sense to me at all. But if you, if you attack it just after it eats, because once it eats, it's just chilling. And that's when it can be attacked. Bodies are the same way. When we just feed them, 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 feed them guess what? It is not very, very good for that body. And, and it's not in survival. So when you fast it, all of a sudden your alertness goes up. Because think about it like this. If, if I'm fasting and I'm now 25, 25 hours since I've eaten food, if I'm lethargic and if I can't think and if, if I'm just really down, how am I going to go get some food? So in fact, the opposite happens. The more you fasted, the more energy I do have so that I can go get food. I had a person in my group this year, this, this week actually, share with me that he ran his first mile under 10 minutes. He runs like seven miles at a time. And he, his last two miles were at nine minutes and eight minutes. And I was like, wow, that's crazy. But he was like, yeah, he had not run a 10 minute mile since 1996. And he's 55 years old now. But since January, he's lost 40 pounds because he has started fasting. So the fasting that you do actually helps your body. It turns it into a super, super duper thing that actually makes it very, very good for us to continue. And so they're all different types of fasts. You know, and, and the longer you fast, the more benefits you get. I started 16-8, which is normal, uh, which was I ate from 10 o'clock in the morning till 6 p.m. And then I did just water until the next morning at 10 a.m. And I did that for two months. I ate about anything, whole pizzas, <laughs> bags of potato chips, the whole thing. But I really gave my body 16 hours because they say it takes 13 hours for our body to process our food. So think about it this way. If the average American, which used to be me, if I get up at 7, 8, I have breakfast then, and then I have uh, lunch at 12, and then I have a snack at 3, and then I have dinner at 6, and then I have a nighttime snack at 6, 7, and then I have another, I'm mean, sorry, uh, 8, 9. And then if I can't go to sleep, then I have a little something just to go to sleep around 10. When did I give my body 13 hours in order to digest my food that I ate at the beginning of the day? I didn't. And so surprise, surprise, the body is unable to process 
all that I got before I'm giving it some more. And it says, whoa, just in case there's World War III and there's no more food, I'm going and McDo all the McDonald's in the world closed down. I'm going to store this just in case. And so you, if you jo join this journey, you will find your body will, as you go fast, longer and longer and longer, your body will have more time where it will use up the blood sugar that's in your, in, your, in your bloodstream. It will then therefore need less insulin. And insulin is our key. We always think insulin is just for diabetics. No, insulin is for healthy bodies as well because insulin controls fat burning or fat storage. So when we are able to get our fat storage uh, stopped and our fat burning going, then insulin helps that happen. And that turns into a whole cycle of actions and other things that will help us to go forward and trim down and get our get all of these benefits that you can see on the page here. And that will make you a much healthier person and a much happier person as well, because the truth of the matter is we really can do this. You can start wherever you can start. You don't have to start with crazy. You don't have to do 26 hours like I'm doing right now. You do not have to do that, uh, but you can do whatever you can do and slowly but surely, you will find your dependence on sugar, your dependence on eating all the time, the habit of eating all the time, you will find that will be able to be lessened and your body will get healthier and you will get your insulin down, which will take your fat burning up. And as a result of that, you will be able to do this. And I'm so happy because, you know, eat a double whopper and nobody bats an eyelash, fast for 16 hours and everyone loses their minds. We've got to change the peer pressure that's in regarding our health. Because even myself, when I uh, am fasting and I put a picture up, I will every now and then get someone say, oh, don't get too skinny. But I never had someone tell me, oh, don't get too fat. There's something reverse about that. And we need to be doing that the other way because the truth of the matter is we can control it. We can maintain it. Here I am a year later and I'm still exactly the way I was before. And yes, yeah, so you're saying you don't eat on purpose. I certainly do not. And this is the result of me doing it. And I want each of you all to experience this same joy of walking past the mirror every single day and going, mm, 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 don't I look good? Because you do and your body will appreciate it and will treat you so much better. And so I am very thankful to Lola for having me here today. I am open to ask your questions or to do whatever you all would like with regards to the discussion of this, uh, this subject because I'm very uh, excited to help and share this with others. And that is what I have to share for this point. Lola, would you like me to stop screen sharing? Would you like me to stop screen sharing now? Uh, you can put your before and after. Before that, okay, uh -huh. excellent, excellent. Okay, well, so I want to make sure that I understand you. So yes. what you're saying is from morning till 6 p.m., mm -hmm. eat what mm -hmm. you want, mm -hmm. and then from 6 p.m. to the next day, don't eat anything. Okay, so here's, yes, yes, yes. In general, here's what, that that is correct. What I'm saying is, but the good news is, this lifestyle has total flexibility to your schedule, okay? Especially for a lot of you all, because you work nights. So your schedule won't necessarily work because you got to put sleep in there, which you all make need to please make sure that you do get your sleep. OK, so it is any block of 16 hours a day well, if that's what you can start with. OK, some people can start with. I had a cousin who started with 12 hours a day. He liked to eat in the morning. So he would get up at seven o'clock before he went out. He would eat and he would eat from seven o'clock to seven p.m. And then he would not eat until the next seven p.m. The problem with us is we keep on eating a little bit, eating a little bit, eating a little bit, eating a little bit, eating a little bit. And all that does is keep your insulin up, keep your insulin up, keep your insulin up. Keep telling your body, store fat, store fat, store fat, store fat, store fat. There's no way in the world you're going to be able to burn it down with that. Now, let me tell you this. Once he did 12 hours, then he could do more. And he did 14 hours. And then he did more. And guess what? He started losing weight. He lost 50 pounds. And then he had a stroke. But what's crazy is he lost 50 pounds, and then he had a mini stroke. But if he would have still been 270 pounds when he had that stroke, he would have been taken out of here. So so what you're doing is really life or death. I mean, that's what I say. This is, I, I like to be nice and things of that sort. But this is some real, this is some real life here. There are people, in, in fact, one of the most shocking stories was that made me understand how important it is to get on this path 
was when I was um, with my cousin, she was going to fly to DC for her best college friend's 60th birthday. And we were ready to go. And the day before she got called that evening and said, don't come. And she was like, what do you mean don't come? Well, it turns out that her friend had a heart attack and died the night before her 60th birthday. So health scares are coming and we are not guaranteed to get through them. But if we take the smallest proactive steps now, now that we can find out more about this, we absolutely positively can lower the risk factors. We lower the risk factors, we lower the risk, and then we are able to live a healthier life because healthy bodies are so much better and stronger than the non-healthy ones as even COVID has proven coming through and finding a lot of the unhealthy and just wiping them out in one fell swoop. Hmm. Okay, so um, so basically you're saying 16 hours. 16 hours is a, is a great starting point if you can do it. And then what you do is you pick out any 16 hours to fast and actually it may be easier to think about it, any eight hours to eat. So for instance, if you work nights and you get home at seven o'clock in the morning, you need to go to sleep. <laughs> so then your window might start at noon, at 12 noon, and then you can eat from 12 until eight, until 8 p.m. And then you go to work and then you don't eat again until noon the next day. Okay, so I have two questions here related. Uh, yes. DeAndrea and Karen Scipio Skinner. Can you drink water while fasting? Absolutely. And that's important because here in Texas, we yes. really dehydrate. Yes, 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 absolutely. There is a thing called dry fasting, but you should not do that initially. Uh, but what we're talking about is water fast. And absolutely, you can drink up water. Water is very, very good. A lot of times we are dehydrated. Uh, they say, they say I, I read the title of one book that says, you're not sick, you're thirsty. You know, just talk about the importance of, of water and us not getting enough and not consuming enough water. So absolutely, you can drink water. Now, once you get into doing this, you can also add a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar to that water. You can also add uh, a tablespoon of lemon juice. Okay, what do those things do the apple to that water? Cider, and those are so little on the caloric scale. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. So the apple cider vinegar, what's good about it is it's acid. Part of the problem why we have heartburn and all those types of things is because we don't have enough acid in our stomach. And so apple cider vinegar is very, very good in increasing the acidity in your stomach, which helps you digest your food better, which helps you break everything down and get nutrition from it. It actually also even suppresses your appetite as well. So that's beautiful. Lemon juice is also very good because it gives you some vitamins and some minerals uh, that you would not have otherwise. Because see, we, we need a reorientation towards even food. The purpose of food is not to taste good. You know, my, my cousin's a doctor, and one of her elderly patients one time said to her, uh, well, you know, Dr. Freeman, if it tastes good, it must not be good for you. Well, you know, we, and that's extreme, but we would be wise to realize that what we evolved to, because I know the picture of me on the left, that was the man who just ate because it tasted good. And that was all I did eat was just things that tasted good and lots of carbs and lots of sugar. Now the me on the right, I'm now getting into avocados and cauliflower. And even, even last week in Houston, I made myself a liver dish. That was the best taste of liver I've ever had. Now, the good news is as we do this journey more and you'll find as you get healthier, you actually will desire the unhealthy things less. Didn't say you won't have them, you know, every now and then a taste for it. And that's, I'm also saying, this is not a diet. So this is not, oh, you got a calorie restrict, which doesn't work. This is not, you can't have that. That's only setting yourself up to binge later. No, you can have whatever you want, but then you need to be consciously aware that what you choose to put in your mouth has a direct correlation on how long it takes you to get to your goal. Okay, I have two questions. Right. Um, the first one is, is this really a sustainable lifestyle change? Yeah. Okay. Yes, yes it is absolutely is sustainable because here that was 2020, 2020, you know, here I am today <laughs> and it's the exact same thing. This is not a roller coaster. This is, <laughs> this is not uh, something that's uh, a fad. This literally is a lifestyle. It's sort of like you understanding sugar is not your friend. Now, I still love the Waffle House. Okay, and it used to be a time when I would come to Houston 
to see my 100 year old aunt that every time I got my feet on the ground in, in, in Houston, I was going to the Waffle House because they don't have them in California. Okay. However, as I get healthier and healthier, guess what? I was just there this last weekend, didn't even think about going to the Waffle House. So what happens is the unhealthy body is unhealthy because of unhealthy habits and the unhealthy habits perpetuate the unhealthy habits. So as you get your body healthier, then your body starts desiring healthy. And, and now a salad is like incredible and nuts and seeds like peanuts and sunflower seeds that don't raise your insulin so you can stay in fat burning are like, oh my God, so good. And the avocado, it's a little mushy, but it's still very good. And that's what the evolution is that will help you to maintain it. The other thing is this, check this story out. Last week, I did a 24 hour fast uh, again with one of our group members. And before that, 24 hour fast. I ate a big bag of Cheetos. I ate like I ate like a pig because I was feasting. Because I tell people you feast and you fast and you repeat it. So I got on the scale and I was 178 pounds. Okay. Now I went to sleep and got up the next morning and I was 171 pounds. So my body had processed six pounds overnight just in my sleep, in my breathing, because actually when you start becoming a fat burner, you actually get rid of your fat. The byproduct is actually H2O water and carbon dioxide. So you breathe out your fat and you urinate out your fat as well. That's why part of my book is sleep and breathe and wait. So the, the crazy as that sounds, by the time it was 24 hours, I was already back down to 170. So I've done that numerous times, never seven, eight pounds in one night, but I've done five pounds. I've done three pounds. I do, you know, two and a half pounds every night I go to sleep. I wake up two and a half pounds because weight, weight varies. Weight does not stay exactly the same. Every time we put something in our mouth, our weight goes up. But when we stop eating, our weight starts coming back down. And so my body now is such a machine that now how easy is it to maintain if I'm at 178 one day and I'm at 170 the next day? This is so sustainable because it just gets the body functioning like the temple of God and the ultimate machine that it actually is. Okay. Now we have three questions. So okay. let's try to get them in. Okay, Gentonio? Okay. All right. I'll, I'll short them. Okay. Um, one wants to know that it, when you're a diabetic, they encourage you not to go long periods of time without consuming foods. What's your thoughts mm -hmm. on that? Right. Okay. Oh, absolutely. So here's what's, here's what's interesting. So think about this, because I've talked to a diabetic and I've had clients that are diabetic. And first of all, you always stay on your medication, you know, coordinate this whole process with your doctor. That's the first thing first. Okay. Now the second, I'm not a doctor, not trying to be one. Okay. But I want you to apply logic here. So look at this logic. So the diabetic says, I must eat so I can take my medicine. So look at that. So I must eat, which raises my insulin, so I can take my medicine, which lowers my insulin. See, I had Crohn's disease, and I found that part of the cause of my Crohn's disease was I was eating intestinal irritants. So instead of the prednisone and the Darvacet and the anti-inflammatories and all those things that I had to take and pain medicine I had to take to, to, to deal with the inflammation, how about I stop eating the foods that were inflaming my intestines in the first place? When I stopped doing that because of a $14 book, Eat Right for Your Type, guess what? The pain went away and then I no longer need the medication. So the truth of the matter is when you start fasting and then fasting does not cause your blood sugar to go up. The purpose of the medicine is to get your blood sugar down. So fasting actually works in line with what the medication is starting to do. So you absolutely can do that and integrate that in. And if you've got a good doctor, they should be willing to talk to you about that. Okay. So the other question is when you exercise, you, let's see, is there a recommendation when to exercise when fasting, uh, fasting, you exercise and get more hungry. I guess. You yes, know, yes, yes, you actually. Yes. Yes. Eating time. Right, 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 right. No, you want to exercise when you are fasting. Okay. It is amazing, but a body that you feed and then you go to the gym, you're not going to feel like working. But if you go to that gym, you should actually go to the gym right before you break your fast. If you do want to do exercise as a part of this, which is, I'm never going to say that's a bad idea, but uh, when you go to the gym right before, 
then basically because you are fasted, your human growth hormone is higher, your insulin sensitivity is higher, so you get more bang for your buck. I have a friend from high school who bought one of my first books, and, and he was saying his trainer told him, wow, David, you work out so much better when you're actually fasted as opposed to full. And so, it, yes, it is something that if you are going to do exercise, the best time to do exercise is right before you break your fast and then break your fast with protein so your body can take that protein and then rebuild the protein and you will get an even better, better result. Okay. Uh, talk about intermittent fasting on a regular basis. And then we have another question after that. So keep that in mind. Okay. I heard, I heard, I heard you just say talk about on a regular basis. It, it cut out. Talk about intermittent fasting yes. on a regular basis. Yes, yes. Intermittent fasting is basically, you know, when I when I first discovered this, I discovered regular fasting, which is, you know, 21 days of no food, just water and, and vitamin supplements. And I, I thought they were out of their mind, even though it was curing cancer and doing all these phenomenal things. And I eventually want to get up to that point. Uh, but uh, I thought they were out of their mind. It was a non-starter. So when I found out about intermittent fasting, it's like, wow, for a portion of a day you are fasting and for a portion of a day you are feeding and you put those two together and over time you get a cumulative benefit of the fasting. I became very, very interested in that. So yes, we fast every day and we feast every day. And if you do that and, and, and do that properly, you will get your insulin level down, which is the ultimate control and your insulin level down, you will burn fat and you will lose weight. Okay. Um, let's see. How much apple cider vinegar should you do? Yes, I do a tablespoon a day. And in that's, 16 ounces of water? In it well, actually, what I do oftentimes is I do a tablespoon and just take it straight. I'm one of those people that I don't like diluting it because it's just it's just more horrible tasting over a longer period of time. <laughs> However, <laughs> I also know that people, and I will do on my prolonged fast, I will put it in about eight ounces or 16 ounces of water and then drink it like it's a lemonade, like it's a tea. And then that I do over a longer period of time. But when I just want to get some in the body, then I just take a tablespoon and just straight and as nasty and sour as can be. But in nature, sour is good, sweet is bad. So remember that when you're thinking about the different tastes you will see on this on this journey. You know, um, we don't have a question right now, so I want to make a comment. Sure. I think this is a, a great idea in that when you, if you don't do nothing but just from 6 p.m. to 6 in the morning not eating and just drinking the water, maybe some apple cider, mm -hmm. you will develop a pattern yes. of not eating as much and, learn, yes. and your body learns to do without food. Yes. And then on the flip side, during the day, you're not as hungry. Yes. And you're not thinking about it as much. Right. So therefore... Yeah, it, your yes. body is coming into what it needs to do. And then you're developing a mm -hmm. lifestyle. Exactly. And so you start with the eight hours yep. and then go up to 12 and 16 before you know it, your size. Right. Your size. And that's what happened with me because, right. And that's what happened with me. I started from 10 to six and then I found at four o'clock PM and I wasn't hungry anymore. So then I did 10 to four. And then I found at two o'clock, I wasn't hungry anymore. So then I did 10 to two. And then I found at 12 o'clock, I wasn't hungry anymore. Then I did 10 to 12, which is one meal a day. And if you would have told me when I was the picture on the left, that I was going to be eating one meal a day and happy about that, I would have th told you you were out your mind. Mm -hmm. I did a YouTube video, which I will put forward onto you. You can forward to your members, but where I ate 4,500 calories in one day, I did uh, I did IHOP for breakfast, McDonald's for lunch, and Panda Express for dinner, and it hurt. It was so much, but that's what I used to normally do. I gained seven pounds from doing that, and then I said, I'm not eating until I burn all that off, and so it took me, the next morning, I lost five and a, four pounds, and then by 24 hours, I had lost five and a half pounds, and then three more hours, I lost that last pound and a half, so it took me 27 hours to burn off what I had put on in one day. But yes, the more we don't eat all the time, the more right. we get used to not eating all the time, which is actually so much better. Right. So I want to throw in also, and while we're not eating, we need to learn to choose the better foods. too. Yes. Too. And, that's and that's what happened too. Because yeah, first, when I first lost my first 20, it was pizza every day. And then once I, once I got 20 off and saw my Buddha belly gone, then I really wanted to give my body good nutrition 
And that's when the avocados came out. That's when the cauliflower came out. There are so many substitutes and I've been on a mission to learn good tasting foods because I love food just like the next person does that we can put into our diet that are healthy for us. Like me making liver last week, amazing. But they're good, healthy tasting, good tasting foods that we can have and we can maintain what the weight loss is that we've had as opposed to sweet potato pie, uh, cake, uh, donuts and potato chips and all those things that just put you right back on top. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this will be our last question. Okay. Miss um, Storms asks, can I use sleeping hours as part of my fasting time? Absolutely. Absolutely. That's one of the best. That's one of the best parts about it. You get credit for hours. Do you not know you burn more fat in your sleep? You know, it's like when I tell you that, you know, overnight I can burn four pounds or five pounds or three pounds when I go during the daytime and for one pound, it takes like a long time to come off me. But yes, we actually get to count the sleeping time as part of it. And with this, you will sleep better. You will sleep deeper. And the, again, the healthier you do things to your body, the healthier your body will respond, the better you will be able to do things to your body, the better your body will respond. It's a, it's a beautiful cycle in the good way. Like we've had the cycle of eat, eat, eat leading us to six, six, six. Right. And so also we do need to remember that if I'll appear to, you know, your mind will tell you, you can't do it. You need to tell yourself, yes, I can. Yes, I can. I'm yes. not hungry. Yes. And move your mind to, to doing other things. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Put your attention on, on other things. I have people who do the longer fast on the weekend. I have people who prefer to do the longer fast on the week because their schedule is busier. This is all about your mind and you can absolutely do it. But here's what I also want to say, but don't beat yourself up when you don't. Right. Okay. I didn't, you know, I didn't go from my first fast to doing 25, 26 hours. Let me see what I'm at right now. <laughs> I'm at 26 hours, 49 minutes and 50 seconds. So I did not start off going, oh, let me do a 27 hour fast. No, that would have been a non-starter. But I kept on doing what I could, kept on doing what I could. If I ate early one day, I ate early. That's the benefit. This is a lifestyle. It's not a diet. So you don't bust it. And if you do it for a little while and then you stop. But what, what do you, this will be the last thing I promise. This and you come back to do it, guess what? It what, picks up right where reason, you were before. Yes. What is your reason for fasting, you know, more than 16 hours? Ah, because if you look here, the longer you fast, the more benefits you get. So the original fast from the 13, 15 hours, you get your human growth hormone, reduced inflammation, fat burning begins, increased uh, ketones, which your body's produced when you're in fat burning, improve energy and focus. Once you go to 17 hours, though, cellular detoxification, cellular repair, improved immune function, cancer prevention. Once you go 24 hours, look, intestinal stem cell regeneration, which is where your, your immune system is a lot, your GABA production, which relaxes you, your brain, your brain healing, autoimmune healing. I used to have Crohn's. Crohn's was autoimmune. My immunity is absolutely as strong as an ox now because I fast all the time. And then you get to 36 hours, 48 hours, 72 hours. I mean, the longer you go, the more you force your body to really bow down. They were even saying like the, on the cancer treatment, if patients would wait five days before they had chemo in five days of fasting, all the healthy cells are totally anchored and protected and only the cancer cells are not protected and then they can more easily be killed. So, I mean, the fasting is this unbelievable secret. The only problem is it's free. Nobody makes any money telling you off not to eat. McDonald's is not gonna say, hey, uh, make it your way, but don't eat today. Nobody's going to tell you that because nobody's financially incentivized to do so. And you know, this society runs on money, but the good news is the longer we go without food, the more intense the benefits become as you get healthier and healthier. Well, wow. This has been just fabulous. fabulous. Thank you. Thank yeah. you very much. Very, very good. And, um, I just don't know. This was a really good thing. I want to thank everybody for coming in. I hope people learn some different ways of doing uh, things. If you need uh, more information on how to reach Antonio Turner, would you like to tell them? 
where you are on YouTube and sure, sure. You can you can look my look my group up. It's on Facebook. It's IF Family uh, Weight Loss by Intermittent Fasting and No Exercise. And I am I am available for people to to help. I have a website, uh, MrRealTruth.com. You can look on there for contact information to me. And I am you know here for people. You can look me up on YouTube. J Antonio Turner is my channel. Uh, is one of my channels. And so uh, the good news is this information is no longer monopolized or held by anyone. It is out there for all of us to use. And so please use it and please try and, and just stick to it. It's a marathon. It took me 30 years to gain my 50 pounds. It took me eight months to lose it. So we got to keep that perspective. It's not going to be tomorrow. It's not going to be two days. But the truth of the matter is, it's going to be, and the rest of your life is going to be so much better. Someone wants you to say the name of the book again. Better, and now please. mine is. What's that? Someone wants you to name the name of the book again. Oh, okay. Yes. The Real Truth, Eat, Sleep, Breathe, Wait, and Lose Weight. Because that is the truth. You must eat. You must not reduce your calories. That only makes your metabolism go down. And then you're really not going to get anywhere. By fasting, your metabolism actually goes up. You must sleep. It is the repair and rejuvenation that is the main thing that happens at nighttime, which is how our bodies burn the most fat. You must continue to breathe. That's kind of automatic because it's involuntary. But the truth of the matter is when you break down fat, you are breathing out the carbon dioxide that resulted from you breaking down fat and the weight. You must have some patience. You must have some patience. And if you will have patience, then the body can do what it's supposed to do in order to make it more likely to survive. And that is going to benefit you with the loss of weight. Okay, and how can someone ask, how do they find you on YouTube? Do they just type your name in? Type, type, type my name in, Jantonio Turner. Yes, yes. yes. yes and also, I will provide you with some, with, I'll provide you, Lola, with some of my videos, and then you can spread them out to folks as people are interested. I'm not trying to hoard any information. I'm definitely not doing this for money. <laughs> it is to share the truth that I know can change this world. And we'll be a much healthier, a much better place when we're a healthier place. Okay, it's your ministry. So it's yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yes. Okay. My father was a minister. My uncle was a minister, and now I'm doing my ministry in this way. Yes, it is. Okay, um, thank you again so much. To me, it's so interesting because I have a lifelong journey with food. Mm -hmm. So this is ongoing, and you know, it's forever. Yes. It's not yes. just one day. So yes. I want to thank you, and I want to thank all of my National Black uh, nurses. Also, our president, she got to be on our exercise session, Dr. Martha Dawson. So thank you. And next month, we're doing obesity and COVID. So we'll see you then. You guys have a great evening. Good night. Good night. Thank you very much. Yeah, let's give him a hand. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate it. I do appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.